Welcome, my name is Nick Mundinger, and this is my podcast for the CMCI 1010 Storytelling Module. Today, we're going to be talking about the healthcare policy in the United States, and how it contributes to our growing income inequality. Recently, the pharmaceutical and insurance industries in America have been coming under criticism from the public, and for good reason. Prices for many essential drugs are at an all-time high, and the US government has no bargaining power to regulate them. Many Americans who rely on this medicine to live find themselves unable to pay for it, due to both the rising cost of drugs and the lack of adequate health insurance. One example is the EpiPen, used by 3.6 million Americans to combat deadly allergic reactions. According to Connexure, the price of the medicine has increased from $57 in 2007 to $318 in 2015, a 461% increase. Heather Bresch, CEO of Mylon, the company that makes EpiPens, has had her salary increased from $2.5 million to $18.9 million per year in the same time period. I sat down with a local physician on this issue who asked to remain anonymous. Every day in my practice, I have to deal with patients who cannot pay for their care or for what they need. Sometimes they forego a treatment or a test because it's too expensive. They need an an MRI, they cannot get it. It's always an issue with everybody. And it's, it's very sad because I feel the country as a whole is not taking care of the healthcare and the well-being of the people who makes this country work. Since the introduction of Obamacare, the percentage of Americans with health insurance has sharply increased. However, the percentage of Americans who have a deductible on their plan has increased from 55% to 81% in the last decade, according to Time Money. Not only that, but 24% of Americans are on high deductible plans, which force them to pay $1,300 out of pocket for all medical expenses before their insurance provider begins to cover it. The amount that the average worker pays for insurance has increased by 67% since 2010. By comparison, the wages of the average worker have only increased by 10%, meaning millions of Americans are struggling to keep up with the rising costs. I had a personal experience with my daughter. She was in a car accident a few years back and she had a lot of issues after that accident. It took two years for her to get back on on her feet and recover her health care. And during those two years, she needed a lot of care that wasn't covered by insurance, including physical therapy, counseling, uh, etc. And if I didn't have the means to provide that, she would have done without it. But it shouldn't be the case. We spend a lot of money on arms and wars and nobody ever questions that. But when it comes to social issues and specifically health care, then nobody's there to provide it. I spoke with Sam Bullington, an instructor of Women and Gender Studies at CU Boulder. The healthcare industry is largely organized around profit and around medical intervention uh, rather than really supporting health and prevention and addressing a lot of the fundamental disparities in society that are actually causing the health problems because we have a very Um, narrow and fragmented way of looking at health in this culture. As people living outside a single-payer healthcare system, we tend not to address our own health concerns unless we absolutely need to. Think about how often you've forgone going to a doctor and waited out your illness because of the cost. How we only start caring about what we're putting into our bodies when something goes wrong. The fact is, we will take the cheapest pathway to health unless it is vital to our survival, because the system in place rewards getting treatment as sparingly as possible. And that needs to change. You know, there was a time where you had a job in the company who 
hired you and employed you was paying for your health care and, and in return you did good job for the company etc. All this kind of social contract is gone now. A lot of companies do not offer health care. If they do, it's health care with very high deductible, which people can very often not, uh, not afford. And that has to change. Amendment 69 is on the ballot this year in Colorado, which would instate a single-payer health care system in the state. Make sure that you are registered to vote, so that you can have your voice heard. This is Nick Mundinger with CMCI 1010, signing off.